17 through 24. Romans chapter number 11, verses 17 through 24. Don't worry, the length of the scripture will not dictate the length of the sermon. Romans chapter 11, verses 17 through 24. And I forgot having my pocket. I don't want to tell you because I don't want nobody to rob me. But I got a thousand dollar donation. Second hey, hey. Here in my pocket. Don't oh, shoot me. I wanted to say that uh, yeah. I knew Sister Wilson had an announcement to make. I thank you for your efforts. Amen. Amen. Um, when she got to reporting all the funds she raised, I said, let me shut up. <laughs> so I thank you for the efforts and the person that gave this thousand dollars has been to this church maybe two or three times visit, uh, but they would like to remain anonymous. It's the same person that gave us $1,000 last year, and it's the same person that gave us $1,000 this year, and I tried to respect their wishes to remain anonymous. So um, I'm excited about that. They were so excited to give it, they came to my job. Now, I don't recommend that you come to my job, but if you must come, <laughs> Text message. I say thank you. I said, uh, I'm just being obedient to God. I said, I understand that. But, but we have some things that we're trying to accomplish at this church, and this helps us to accomplish. Uh, they were very excited to have uh, been able to contribute uh, to the ministry of God. Romans chapter 11, I had to share that. Let me take it out. For you. Say that uh, Romans chapter 11, verses 17, 17 through 24, word of our God reads like this. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you being a wild olive were grafted in among them and became a partaker with them of the rich root of the olive tree, mm -hmm. do not be arrogant toward the branches. If you are arrogant, remember that it is not you who supports the root, but the root who supports you. <laughs> you will say then, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. Healer responds, quite right. But they were broken off for their unbelief. But you stand by your faith. All right. All right. All right. All right. Do not be conceited, but fear. All right. For God did not spare, for, for if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Right. Behold then the kindness and the severity of God to those who fail severity, but to you, God's kindness, if you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off, and they also, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. I love this, for God is able to graft them in for if you were cut off from what is by nature a wild olive tree and were grafted in contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, yeah, yeah, yeah. how much more will these who are the natural branches be grafted in? 
their own island tree. I want to preach this morning from the subject, Thank God for Israel. Thank God for Israel. T-H-A-N-K. Thank God for Israel. Thank God, Israel. Luke, chapter number 10, particularly verses 30 through 37, records Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan who went out of his way to assist a man who had been stripped, beaten, and left for dead. Unfortunately, we do not know the economical status of the man who had been stripped, beaten, and left to die. Neither do we know the educational level of a man who had been stripped, beaten, and left to die. Neither do we know the ethnicity of the man who had been stripped, beaten, and left to die. Because all the Bible informs us is that there was a man who had been stripped, beaten, and left to die. And as this man who had been stripped, beaten, and left to die, perhaps in a pool of his own blood, came three different individuals, two of which who did absolutely nothing, while one, the Good Samaritan, offered aid. The first individual that passed by this man who was perhaps lying in a pool of his own blood was a priest. The second individual that passed by this man perhaps lying in a pool of his own blood was a Levite. But the third man, this Samaritan, stopped by and gave assistance to this man. Again, we do not know the economical situation of this man. We do not know the educational level of this man. Neither do we know the ethnicity of this man. But the context surrounding the parable seems to suggest that the man who had been stripped, beaten, and left to die was not of Jewish descent. It is safe to assume that the man was not of Jewish descent because Jesus had just had a conversation with a lawyer who wanted to know, who is my neighbor? The question was in reference to the fact that Jews thought that they were only to offer assistance to other Jews. So when the priest passed this, this man up, it's probably because he's not Jewish. And when the Levite passes him up, it's probably because he's not Jewish. But when the Samaritan sees him, the Samaritan doesn't care whether he's Jewish or non-Jewish. All he knows is that he needs help. And he's able to help him. Priest, and the Levite pass up this individual because he did not look like them. They passed up this individual because he did not talk like them. They passed up this individual because they did not dress like him. They passed him up because in their minds, as a Jew, they were above him. And he was beneath them. I'm gonna say that again, because I need you to get that. They failed to offer assistance because they felt that they were above him. Unfortunately, 
unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, I have come to realize that the reason the church is failing to fulfill its God-given purpose is because somehow, some way, we have got the mentality that we are better than unsaved people. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, we fail to minister to those who need ministering to because they don't look like us. We fail to minister to them because they don't dress like us. We fail to minister to them because they're not giving anything to us. But God didn't call us to minister to them if they do something for us. The commission just says, go into all the world and make disciples. Didn't say anything about how they look. Didn't say anything about how they talk. Didn't say anything about how they dress. It just said, make disciples. But the church is failing to make disciples because somehow we have gotten around to thinking that we are better unsaved people. If you think that you are better than somebody who is not saved, I stood up to tell you this morning, how sadly are you mistaken? You don't get no extra cool points because you saved and somebody else is not. You don't get no extra credit for being a saved person and somebody else is not because the fact of the matter is you don't even have what it takes to save yourself. <laughs> Particularly in the church, theologically speaking, some theologians think that the church is a replacement of Israel. Some theologians think that the church is a new Israel. And for that reason, people who think that way, they think that they are better than Israel. That they somehow are more important than Israel. But here in the text, the question has to be raised. Why should you refrain from exalting yourself above Israel? To stretch that a little further, why should you refrain from exalting yourself above unsaved people? Here, and I was elected to take the Holy Spirit makes known to us why it is that both you and I should refrain from exalting ourselves above Israel. Are you interested? You should refrain from exalting yourself above Israel because salvation came through Israel. If you graced us with your presence on last week, then you would have heard me preach a sermon entitled, Saved for a Reason. It was inside that little sermon that we asked, we raised the question, why were you saved? And if you took good notes, then you would have learned that both you and I are saved to make Israel pursue salvation. And not only are we saved to make Israel pursue salvation, we are saved to make Israel receive salvation. And not only are you and I saved to make Israel pursue and receive salvation? Ultimately, you and I are saved to reconnect Israel back to God. And it was based on that argument that Paul transitions into Romans chapter 11, verse 17, by commanding us. By commanding us. By instructing us. That salvation came through Israel. Therefore, it is simply foolish for you and I to think that we are better than Israel when we come when salvation came to us from them. Paul opens verse 17 by using the contrasting connecting word, but but if some of the branches were broken off 
and you bring, and you being a wild olive, were grafted in among them and became a partaker with them of the rich root of the olive tree. Generally speaking, verse 17 is a summary statement of Romans chapter 11, verses 11 through 16. Romans chapter 11, verse 11 through 16, Paul tells us that we were saved ultimately to reconnect Israel back to God. In verse number 17, Paul sums up that entire argument onto one verse by comparing Israel in the church to an olive tree. An olive tree was a very popular tree in Palestine. You had what was known as a regular olive tree and what was known as a wild olive tree. A regular olive tree is simply in reference to a tree that had been cultivated, which is a fancy way of saying it is a tree that had been well taken care of. It was a tree that received all its proper nourishment. It was a tree that received the proper sunlight. It was a tree that received the proper water. It was a tree that received the proper food. It was Israel. But then you had a wild olive tree. It, it had just been, seeds had been thrown out. And grow if you can. <laughs> I ain't gonna water you. I'm not gonna feed you. I'm not gonna give you the right sunlight. Just I'm gonna throw you out there and grow as you can. It was both you and I. But in the biblical days, if you came across a wild olive tree who looked like it had some life in it, what a gardener would do is he would uproot the wild olive. All right. And he would find a good olive and he would plant that wild olive into that good olive. He would connect the lifeless tree to a tree that had life in it. And if it wasn't for the tree who had life, then the tree who didn't have life didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Paul says, you should not, you should refrain from exalting yourself above Israel because it's because of Israel that you even have a chance. <laughs> So instead of puffing your chest up in Israel, you ought to say, thank God for Israel. Verse 17 is simply a summary statement of why you and I were saved. But it's based on that summary in verse 17 that Paul issues a command in verse 18. Do you see it? Paul says, because Israel is responsible for your salvation, here is the command, do not be arrogant. <laughs> if you got a highlighter, pencil, pen, whatever you got, you might want to underline that word arrogant because you will see a difference when we get to verse 20. I'm moving ahead of myself now. Paul says, verse 18, do not be arrogant. You do know what the word arrogant means, don't you? It means to be proud. It means to exalt yourself above somebody else. Paul says, because you now know that you received salvation because of Israel, it doesn't make good sense for you to think that you are above Israel. If you are a child who came out of your mother's 
remember this. It's in your Bible. I didn't make this up. If you are arrogant, that's a first class conditional statement. It, a first class conditional statement in Greek assumes that what Paul is about to say is true. So when Paul says, if you are arrogant, the assumption is some of you are. Did you miss that? Let's rewind and hit play one more time. If you are arrogant. In Greek, if is a first class conditional statement. A first class conditional statement assumes that what Paul is about to say is true. Paul says, if you are arrogant, I'm assuming that you are arrogant because it is true that some of you are arrogant. Paul says, here's my message to you. Remember this. <laughs> Remember this. That it is not you who supports Israel, but it's Israel who supports you. If you are arrogant, if you think that you are better than Israel, Paul says, remember this. If I could expand the text just a little bit here. Israel here represents unbelieving Jews. Unbelieving Jews. Therefore, Paul is speaking primarily about exalting yourself above Israel. But since Israel represents unbelieving Jews, it is safe to expand the text to mean unbelievers in general. You should not only refrain from exalting yourself above Israel, you should refrain from re exalting yourself above anybody who's not saved. Just because you know God and they don't, doesn't mean that you are somehow better than they are. Can I tell you why this is important? You cannot minister to somebody who you think you are better than. You can't love on nobody who you think you are better than. But when you understand that you receive mercy and they need mercy, then you can minister. Paul says, if you are arrogant, if you have exalted yourself, above Israel, if you have exalted yourself above unbelievers, if you have placed yourself on a pedestal, uh -huh. Paul says, come down. Come down. Get off of your high horse. Come back to earth. Remember this. That it is not you who supports them. It's them who supports you. I haven't really spent another 30 minutes right there. But I told you I was trying to get out by 11 o'clock. And it's already 11.05. Let me press my way on. You should refrain from exalting yourself above Israel because salvation came through Israel. But not only should you refrain from exalting yourself above Israel because salvation came through Israel, but you should refrain from exalting yourself above Israel because salvation is by faith in Christ. Verses 19, 20, and 21, Paul clearly reminds us that we are saved by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation can only be obtained by faith in Jesus Christ. Paul says, verse 19, you will say then branches were broken off so that I might 
be grafted in. Verse 20, Paul says, that's quite right. Conceited. 
by not thinking that you are more than what you are. Paul says, if you really want to know how to reverence God, it's not about teaching a good lesson. It's not about preaching a good sermon. You really reverence God when you humble yourself before him. Paul says, salvation came by faith in Jesus Christ. You should Refrain from exalting yourself above Israel because salvation came from the Jews or from Israel. You should refrain from exalting yourself above Israel because salvation is by faith in Christ. The last thing, you should refrain from exalting yourself above Israel because salvation still belongs to Israel. Salvation still belongs to Israel. In verses 22, 23, and 24, Paul instructs us to never forget that God is ultimately the one responsible for salvation. Paul says, Behold then the kindness and the severity of God. I love that. We are well acquainted with that first word, aren't we? The kindness of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God. We like to talk about that, don't we? How good God is. How excellent and wonderful God is. The kindness of God. The grace of God. The mercy of God. But don't scratch it out. Paul says the severity of God. Paul says, behold, God is kind. Yes, he is. God is merciful. Yes, he is. God is long-suffering and gentle in me. Yes, he is. But Paul, what's this severity word you talking about here? Severity literally means meanness. <laughs> it means roughness. <laughs> yeah. We normally define God as someone who speaks a soft, gentle voice in our ear. And yes, God is soft and gentle and loving and kind and, and, and easy to the touch. But Paul informs us that God also has a mean side. All right. And his mean side is poured out on those who think that they are better than somebody else. All right. All right. If you're walking around exalting yourself above people, heed my warning, you are walking on dangerous territory. I like the way H.P. Charles said that if y'all die and go to hell, it ain't my fault. But I did not hesitate to proclaim to you the full counsel of God. And a part of the full counsel of God is that you and I should not exalt ourselves above other people because God doesn't like it. Not only is it wrong, but God does not like it when we think that we are better than other people. But here's why you shouldn't think that you are better than other people. Verse 23 says, And they also, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in because God is able. It's why you and I should not exalt ourselves above other people. Primarily because God is able. Okay, I'm going to tell you again. You shouldn't exalt yourself above other people. Because God is able. Yes, he is. 
what is he able to do? He's able to save them like he saved you. <laughs> you shouldn't exalt yourself above them because God is able to do for them what he did for you. <laughs> if you drive a nice car, don't look down on nobody who don't drive a nice car because God is able to do for them what he done for you. If you wear nice clothes, don't think that you are better than somebody who doesn't wear nice clothes because God is able to do for them what he did for you. God is able. Salvation still belongs to Israel because God is able to save Israel just like he was able to save you. Let me rush here. This is what Paul uses the whole illustration of an olive tree. He says, in essence, that it is a lot simpler for God to take Israel and put them in and graft them into their own olive tree than it was for him to take you and put them and put you in Israel's olive tree. He says that was easier for God to do, but if God is able to do the harder thing of taking you a wild olive and putting you into a good olive tree, certainly God is able to take Israel and put them in their own olive tree. Salvation still belongs to Israel. As I brought up one thing I was not foreign to was getting in trouble. <laughs> if I knew how to do anything, I knew how to get in trouble. Every time I got in trouble, my mother had what she called an oak stick. We still got that stick today. It's in a manner, you know, what mama used to whip all of us with. I was well acquainted with the old stick because I simply knew how to get in trouble. Are you with me? I knew how to get in trouble so good, she should have called my name in the old stick. But it doesn't matter how many times I disappointed my mother. It didn't matter how many times my mother had to use that oak stick to chastise me. It didn't matter how many times I made my mother angry. I was still her child. I need you to feel the tension of the text. It didn't matter how much she told me go in my room or to get away from her. Sooner or later, mama was going to lift up her voice and tell me to come back to me. So it is with Israel. God saved both you and I ultimately to reconnect them back to him. And it doesn't matter how much they have disappointed God, God still has a plan to bring Israel back to himself. You should not refrain from exalting yourself above Israel. Ultimately, you should refrain from exalting yourself above any unbeliever. Because salvation came through Israel. Salvation is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Israel still belongs to God. Luke 10, verses 30 through 37. That was a priest. That was a Levite who walked right past a person in need 
because they thought that they were above them. I want to know how many people have you passed up because you thought that you were better than them. May God bless you and may God keep you. The doors of the church are open. If you are here and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you should make your way to these brothers' seats.